Hey everybody! Hello and welcome to another episode of Codex Legendarium. Sorry for the late start, but we are here for a mini episode today. We'll still be ending at the normal time. Uh, before we get into the recap from the last time, do we have any announcements for anybody? Not for me. All right. Well, I guess we'll just get right into the recap. So, last time we were at a party. Dieter von Stark's most recent soiree, uh, in which uh, everyone got to wander around a bit and explore. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, the biggest thing that happened at the very beginning was Yule went and reunited with her family, her her troop, her uh, uh, you know sister, and the and the rest of the circus. Uh, and all of them kind of just had a general reaction of "oh shit." Uh, most re most uh, the the largest reaction was from sister, who was kind of like "oh shit," but was also like very happy to see Yule and like "what are you doing here?" Uh, this was also when Yule and everybody else discovered that the circus is not owned by Reverence, by Sister. The circus is owned by a mysterious, strange owner uh, who just just seemed delighted at absolutely everything happening. Just was having a grand old time, which just didn't really seem like a good thing. Um, after Yule left... Uh, Monty had been kind of Monty helped out a captain by helping him escape from a oh, yeah. gaggle of mothers who were trying to marry off their daughters. Um, uh, let's see, we met with uh, oh, we met with Dieter's uh, desired betrothed, no, not betrothed, but his the 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 object of his affections, or at least his the target of his ambitions. Uh, Lady Marietta Veer. And uh, uh, Monty actually went and met with her in the hedge maze and discovered that uh, she really just wants to learn about magic. She is capable, she's actually capable of magic in a similar way to the party is. Uh, not to the same level, but she's capable of casting Control Flame at a, uh, a very efficient level. Uh, she can do it in a round as opposed to what they've other people will take like a full several rounds to cast a cantrip she's able to just do it um, and she just wants to study magic she just wants to learn about magic learn about her gifts uh, and find out why she is the way she is but and doesn't want to get married to Dieter so uh, I'm not or gave her these. Uh, after that uh, Yule basically said I'm going to be the spring bean and went uh, went up to Dieter, found him in the hot tub, and went up to him and introduced herself. We went with a pers uh, per I forget if it was persuasion or performance role, but a role to uh, you know try and charm Dieter. And the dice told the story, and it was a natural twenty, leaping this strange stranger Yule up to the top of Dieter's list. Uh, he was suddenly enchanted, enchanted by Yule. Pretty sure it was performance i have a plus five <laughs> yep yep that was like it was 25 in performance yeah uh dieter then uh invited yule up onto the terrace to, sp to spend some time with him uh after which he decided that it was dinner time and while yule was uh, selecting her all dessert dinner uh dieter went and got changed and came back out and just declared that it was dinner time so everyone came and sat down at the long tables uh, in the yard of the terrace, and only Dieter and Yule up on the terrace looking down on the rest of the party guests. Uh, and where we ended was Dieter making eye contact with Monty, and uh, a wisdom save was made, but it was successfully made. Monty uh, rolled, a very, rolled very well on his wisdom save, and there was no ill effects. So that is where we begin with dinner, Tedros and Monty sitting down uh, at a table near each other, and Yule and Dieter sitting down at the table up top. So, uh, I think I want to start with Monty and Tedros down at the table below. Uh, I just want to find out what they're doing. Tedros, take a shot. Take the shot. I, I, I think I need it, yeah. Uh, and Tedros goes ahead and takes a shot. He's like, oh boy, okay. Um, of liquor, I'm guessing. Oh yes. Oh, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I, I really thought. Yeah. 
that, no, we're keep that. I love that moment. Mom, That's funny. The shot, Ted Rose, and Ted Rose goes, yep, yes, sir. And just <laughs> takes a shot. And Monty's like, no, I'm... <laughs> well. Uh, oh, oh. You, like, oh, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pass on that, actually. Um, All right. I... That's. I don't think there are a lot of people here. A lot. Uh, Tedros would definitely see Monty visibly glaring up at the head table. I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that it's like full Spider-Man three. Yeah. Norman Osborn. <laughs> look, yeah. Just glaring at him. Yeah. It's like bending my fork. <laughs> So Monty's, Monty's just silently staring up at uh, up the head table. Yeah. All right. Doing my best not to be stupid. All right. I appreciate that. All right. So so Monty is just Monty is going with restraint, just sitting there and just not eating, not drinking, just n- not staring eating. and bending just... my fork out of like stress. All right. Breaking the silverware and breaking silverware uh, stress. Yep. All right. But uh, otherwise, maintaining decorum and managing to keep his cool. Okay. Just, um, just the only person breaking their utensils. Yep. All right. Uh, is Tedros doing anything uh, in particular then, as Monty is just sitting here just glaring up at the head table? Um, Tedros is actually... He's fairly certain that there's not a any possibility that either Dieter or um, Yule is going to be out of... Mont Blanc site, so he's mm-hmm. actually trying to take some time to kind of pick out where uh, the uh, the carnival's mysterious patron might be in all of this. Ooh. Uh, give oh, me a perception nice. check, then. I'm not a bunch of stuff over. It's fine. You don't have to oh, drink uh, on me. What's... It's in nice clothes. Why would I do that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's a 15. 15? Okay. Um, It's just barely. Um, But you're like, you're glancing around. You have to glance around for a while. And you have to do that thing where you can't just like do a quick cast over the crowd uh, and just like try and find her at a glance. You actually have to do like you find yourself having to basically look like one by one at each of the faces as you look kind of like left to right across the back of the uh, the back of the dinner section. And it takes until about your second or third pass that you finally realize, you finally spot her. Uh, she's just sort of standing at the back, just with a glass in hand, just like a long stemmed glass of some kind of wine in hand, leaning against a pillar and just kind of watching everything from the back. Um, and it's strange because it's like it's almost like your eyes just kind of naturally passed over her uh, each of the times when you looked by before and it took until that last pass for you to really be able to focus and actually just like not have her just kind of blended into the background um, and you can and you can kind of just see her standing there you know maybe maybe you're stressed maybe it's that there's a lot happening here and you know Yule's up there Monty's right next to you bending a fork there's a lot of people your attention is pulled elsewhere maybe that's it or maybe it's something else um, and she is standing there at the back with those uh, yellow tinted glasses on and uh, her long painted fingernails uh, kind of just like clinking along her glass idly she looks up also at the head table um, but you get the sense that she's probably not looking at the same person that Monty is So that is where you find her. Um, it, so she's looking up at things. Um, are any of the people from the carnival here as well? Or? Um, you don't see any, no. And uh, when you were back behind the tent, you did notice that like they had their own cook and their own like camp and everything back there. So you get the sense they probably don't join in the like party dinner. But okay. she does. All right. Um, and uh, 
Lady Marietta? Um, she, you can see her. She's sitting next to a woman, an older woman that looks, shares some of her features. You would guess is probably her mother. Um, and like you can, you can see some whispering happening back and forth between the two of them. Also looking up at the head table. Well, the mother is looking up at the head table. Marietta is like not decided. Marietta is just kind of trying to focus on her food, and her mother is keep, keeps basically looking up at the head table and whispering back to her very intensely. Um, yeah, Tedros is going to, once he's got a kind of a, a view of all the people that he does know mm -hmm. so far, ah, uh, he's just going to keep an eye on my ball. How far away is Dieter? Good question. I can actually, I should be able to tell you that based on, he has to be within a certain distance based on that wisdom save that you made. Which I don't know he did, Take right? Take fairness. Uh, correct, yes. Okay, yeah. That one did not have a noticeable effect uh, for the failure. But did I notice him look at me and do the, like, do, like, the head tilt when he went... Hmm. You, you you noticed that, yeah, you two like locked okay, eyes cool. for a second, and then you made a wisdom save, but you didn't so know. So we both know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and there is a... Uh, so, okay, that had a, you are about 100 feet away from each other. That's farther than I wanted. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna try to play with his blood. All right. Uh, well, then, with that, let's jump up to the top of the terrace where uh, it's a lovely view. You're up on this terrace. It's a, it's a large stone mosaic tiled terrace with railings up in front, with like those kind of almost vase shaped accents on the corners. Um, the the front of the terrace kind of juts out forward to uh, the front railing, which is where two sets of stairs descend outwards from the middle, but your table is actually kind of up in that middle part, directly in front of the middle railing, as prominently featured as you can be, uh, set up at the railing based on or the, the stairs on either side of your table, kind of making it unusable for, like, the stairs unusable for anybody, and, like, everyone has to come around from, like, the back or something like that. Uh, so this is just your space and your spotlight for the two of you up here. Oh. Yule's heart is just, like, beating in her chest, mm -hmm. but you Hopefully. can't see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's beating <laughs> quickly. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can't tell, though. She has uh, kept her composure. Mm -hmm. um, throughout this dinner as people are bringing these fancy sweets that she's never had before. <laughs> she has no idea what anything is, but she is um, delightfully like trying everything and main like trying to maintain there's so much going through her head it's just like make sure that you don't eat too much and make sure that you don't eat weirdly and like just making like everything going through her head about what sister has told her and like the spring bean is in her head like the decorum that she's watched but not gotten to play a part in um and so she's just trying to not eat too much not talk too much and just not not be the like person that everyone fears she could be in a social setting. Okay. Um, and for the beginning, for the first part of this was as you know the, the meal is being served. You know, uh, you're getting into it. You're starting to eat. Both of you are hungry, so uh, it's pretty much just like idle small talk back and forth between the few of you to start. Just like how you know things like how you've been liking the party what did you think of this that kind of thing mm -hmm. uh nothing to no no topics that require a lot of like thought or intensive amounts of speaking uh so that way you two can just kind of like enjoy the beginning of the meal yeah and she relies uh on her you know like the what she's always heard is the like smile and nod and you know as an entertainer you're told that like your clients want to talk and you're supposed to listen and so she's like trying to sort of feed into his ego and let him tell stories and things like that okay um after a bit though as like as you you know the beginning of the meal winds down you start to get into a little bit more of a uh a comfortable pace uh he will he will turn and ask so Tell me about yourself. Uh, 
Where do you, uh, you mentioned that uh, you come from a valley. Uh, you mentioned that you sort of uh, get around and uh, adventure. Tell me about some of that. Oh, well, uh, yes, I, I come from the valley and I've been traveling around for uh, whew, a, a little while now. Um, I used to be a performer. I used to be an acrobat, um, much like in the circus. Uh, but now I I have friends that I go on adventures with and we've come into a lot of um, terrifying situations, but I'm always able to get out and I mostly am interested in learning about you. Oh, I would be very interested in learning about uh, some of these terrifying situations you mentioned. That sounds exciting. Oh, it's it's nothing much. Um, <laughs> certainly nothing that would be more interesting than what you've encountered on your voyages. Oh, I can't say that. Uh, my voyages uh, uh, mostly keep me around. Uh, being the flagship of a navy, uh, they don't like to send us out too far into into the unknown. We like to keep around, uh, make appearances. Uh, you know, we don't want to risk uh, risk such an important ship. Oh, so you haven't actually gotten into any battles? Well, not much call for battles in peacetime. We're not at war with anybody, so uh, okay. mostly just a uh, little squabbles here and there, uh, bandits. Pirates, that sort of thing. A few monsters, but uh, nothing too exciting. A few too monsters? Exciting. Well, what's the scariest thing you've encountered? Scariest thing I've encountered? Ah. Hmm. Well, that's the, say, that's the thing. Uh, it's hard for me to say because uh, I've never... Uh, I've never found uh, these mo monsters like this uh, too frightening myself, uh, despite the how much danger it's part of the job right uh you just oh, you're you know, so you brave need to face uh <laughs> face down uh dangerous creatures and people without fear and uh, keep your composure that sort of thing well what kind of creatures have you encountered well where's the uh there's uh merfolk and keeping up uh keeping up I mostly sing things like on board of treaties and make sure they don't uh, hassle any ships or things like that. Uh, let's see. A few giant sharks that were uh, harassing our fishing lanes, things like Land that. Land sharks? No, no, no. Just just, just large, large sharks. Big oh, ones. I've, I've only ever seen land sharks. Or, or have I heard of them? Land sharks? I've never seen a land shark before. Yes, yes, they're sharks, but they're on land. Oh. That, uh... We don't have anything like that in the valley. I hope not. That sounds frightening. Well, have you seen a danger kitty? I can't say I ever. I've seen a kitty, but I haven't seen a danger kitty. It's it's like a, it's like a kitty, but it's definitely more dangerous. I would assume so from the name. Um, I know it has a different name. But I don't remember what it is. Hmm. I uh, can be a little forgetful. Oh, it's all right. I think your name is better anyway. <laughs> I mean, people can tell me anything and this just goes right out. All right. Uh, so you said, uh, but what sort of dangers have you encountered? Well, there's the danger kitty and uh, I was once almost human sacrificed. Um... I I fought a hag and uh, I um hmm what else what else uh underground library thing lots of cool things. Wow, you really have seen found yourself all over the place, haven't you? Yes, but the trouble is I never remember what anything is called, so I don't actually know where I've been. Hmm. And uh, what about you? What sort of talents do you have that's uh, able to keep you safe with all this danger? Oh, well, my talents are mainly misdirection. Misdirection? Interesting. Yes, it's, um, it's a trick, a, a parlor trick. I can create light and then she will, like, 
hold up one of the tea cakes in front of her and just mm-hmm. like create a little light and just just enough for him to see just it's just glowing mm-hmm. just a little bit and she'll say it's just these crystals they're attuned to my body and they make it look like the things are creating light and i use that in my performances but i also can use it in battle it distracts the enemies and then my friends can you know jump in and help me uh tedros please make me a perception check <laughs> ruh <Ruh-ruh. laughs> ten Ten? Okay. Nothing. I know. You can you can see the little slight glow as as Yuliana casts light, but that's about it. Um, he says glaring up there still. Fascinating. So uh, that wouldn't happen to be uh, some sort of magic head, would it? No, no. It's um. I mean, maybe the dealer that sold them to me was magic. Maybe they're imbued with something. But all they do is cast a little bit of light, and it only works for my body. Ooh, all right then. Uh, and he's about to say something, and then uh, you see his uh, his manservant Lutz, uh, who is the one who kind of like brought you the menu and everything, uh, comes up and says, "Excuse me, sir," and then leans in to whisper uh, in Dieter's ear, says something that uh, you can't hear without like trying to lean in and listen to, um, and then uh, after a second, Dieter nods and then says, uh, pardon me, I just uh, have some very quick I need to take care of. Oh, of course. Um, Shall I wait here? Will you be coming back? Oh, I'll be back in just a moment, yes. Of course. And right. she'll just put something else in her mouth mm-hmm. and try and be calm. Alright. Uh, yeah, let's, well, let's like help, like, pulls the chair back and then Dieter gets up and then turns around and goes and walks back inside and then like, you see Dieter get up and walk back inside the estate. I stand up. Okay. Jedros, I gotta go take a piss. A blonde. Wanna come with? There are a lot of people. And he just left. I'll kill you. <laughs> go. And I'm gonna attempt to find a way into the house. Or, like, go after. Okay. Um, alright. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Go ahead and make me a quick investigation check. Let's share this for everybody on D and D Beyond. All right. Um. I I love it, but I hate it. Okay, investigation check. Mm-hmm. Nine. <laughs> All right. Uh, you get up and you start walking around the sides and looking around. You're, yeah, you're trying to find a way into the house, but uh, the back end of the house is pretty. There's not a lot of. Uh, there's not a lot of entrances back here. They do. There do appear to be servants' entrances, but like, they're constantly they have waiters and like wait staff and people constantly mm-hmm. moving in and out. Can I at least find a secluded area where there isn't anybody? Uh, you can. Yes. I want to take out my alchemist kit and start a fire. Okay. All right. Um, so you go. You start working on. Uh, go ahead and give me a give me a roll with the alchemist kit just to see. Yeah. Uh, how that goes and how long that takes you. Here we go. Probably bad as well. Oh, what do you know? Really bad. D and D beyond. Your dice roller sucks. Six. Okay. I mean, you can do it. It's going to take you time. Great. So uh, you go over and you can like, find a secluded corner, like probably up against the house. Probably there's like some bushes up against the house. You find like some dry ones that you can start working at. Perfect. Um, and let me just look something up real quick. Because I don't think. Let's see if something requires line of sight. I don't yeah. think it does. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, you go and do that. I, like it's like a minute later mm-hmm. that uh, a servant opens up the door uh, up on the terrace, and then Dieter comes walking out. Um, 
Dieter comes walking out. Uh, Lutz pulls the chair back again. Dieter sits down in the chair. Lutz pushes it back in. And then uh, Dieter turns and just resumes small talk with Yule. Um, and while that's happening, though, uh, Mont Blanc, mm-hmm. you hear... Oh, perfect. ...a voice in your ear. You're familiar, actually, with this with this method of communication. It is message. Mm. And you hear... Hello, Sully. Oh, man. And you can reply to this message. Yes, you can. <sighs> Hello, Dita. Long time no see. Uh... Oh, sorry, that, was, that just switched to accents. That's fine. Long time no long time no see. I just I took on Monty's accent. Long time no see. It looks like you're uh, enjoying my party, aren't you? It's a bit shit, if I'm being honest. <laughs> you would say that. You never did have taste. Oh, oh interesting. Fuck. Um. You enjoying the view up there? It's quite nice. Quite nice indeed. Lovely view of my party. Lovely view of uh, my new guests up here. I don't see you around, well. Things to do. Mm. I bet. Oh, uh, I think it's very interesting. I just learned something perhaps you'd be interested in. What would that be? Oh, well, uh, my new companion up here, sitting across the table from me, happens to have been seen uh, fleeing Mumbleton Manor the other night. Interesting. What were your intentions then? Oh, well, I just thought it was interesting that uh, you and uh, one other guest were also seen in the same place. That is a coincidence, isn't it? Coincidence? Oh. Suppose it was. Suppose it was. I suppose that depends on what your intentions are, depend what my intentions are. I'm just here to give you a better view. <laughs> well, if you're doing that, you're not doing a very good job of it since you're not in view anymore. That's the point. Hmm. And, uh, what are you doing over there? By the bushes. Taking a shit. Hmm. Ah, well. So you, uh, you just come to my party to, uh, eat my food and shit on my lawn? Also came to settle the score. I think both of us would like settled. Hmm. Look around you, Monty. My score is very well settled right now. That's what you. Oh, think. Sorry, he says, "Look around you, Sully." He doesn't call you Monty. Oh, right. That was my. That was my bad. For now. You intend to do something about that? Would you like me to? No, I don't think I would. I don't know if you would either. I thought when la- I thought st- thought last time we saw each other that uh, you had nothing left to lose. It looks like you went and found yourself some more things to lose. I don't have any attachments. It's fine. <laughs> oh, is that so? Means to an end. Make me a deception check. Am I lying? You tell me. Why does this dice roller suck so much? 13, and I'm proficient in that shit. 
Oh, I'm, right. going, I'm going me... physical dice now. Fuck, All right, yeah, that was fair. That's fair. I'm gonna roll an. I'm, I'm gonna roll an insight check for him. Let's see. Let's see. Um... All right. Uh, his response then is, "Oh, Sally, if I had known you were this uh, cold-hearted, then uh, well, maybe you would have you could have joined the mutiny after all." You didn't give me a chance. Well, you didn't give me a chance. You went. You decided to run off and warn the captain. Well, if I had known it was your plot, things might have been different. Well, that's a shame. If I had known, you would have said yes. I would have asked. So what now, then? What now, indeed? You see, I am uh, quite enjoying my party here. Uh, my guest here is lovely, despite her previous criminal activities. So, uh, I would certainly prefer that you, lot you, leave my party and don't come back, and then we won't have any problems. I'd much rather we talk in private, though. <laughs> I'm sure you would. But, uh, I have appearances to make. So, uh, I think I'm going to, uh, keep up my appearances, and, uh, maybe sometime later I can pencil you into my schedule. Hmm. Fair enough. So what do you say? Are you going to cause me problems? I'm just not going to or... respond. All right. Not responding, he says. All right. But, uh... Don't come crying to me if you don't like what happens. And then he will stop messaging. By the way, Yule, this entire time, uh, the uh, Dieter next to you has been keeping up a full conversation. Small talk, just Great. little things about that, awesome. but like pretty much just cool. like nodding along and listening to what you have to say and things like cool, that. Cool, cool, cool. Does the you lot who need to leave involve you? Like, I can't. I mean, you don't hear any of this conversation. I know. I didn't. So. I, I'm just kind of asking as a player. I'm so confused. Okay. Yeah. No. He's basically he he basically said uh, I I saw he's he basically I didn't say that he didn't say I saw he said. So I've been made aware that all of all three of you were here, and I've identified you. Yeah, we're at Mumbleton Manor last night, breaking into it and yeah. running away. Yeah, uh, I know you basically said okay. I know all, all the two the two of you are associated with Mont Blanc, and uh, get out my business is what he said basically. I yeah, I'm just okay. Mm -hmm. So you're just sitting there eating mm -hmm. and talking and just you know still. Just trying to keep up, be a nice date. Mm -hmm. uh, give me a quick perception check while you're while you're sitting there eating and being a nice date, just to see if you notice mm -hmm. anything strange. Take the shot, Ted Rose. <laughs> uh, I got a nineteen. What do I add to that? Um, perception. Twenty-one. Dirty. Ooh, oh, actually, let me let me let me roll something if you got that good. At least really quick, does he? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, you, what you would notice, uh, it was just a little odd. Um, it takes it takes like a good couple minutes, like maybe five to seven minutes after he comes back and sits down for you to notice, but, uh he hasn't actually been eating anything uh, or really like touching his food or silverware at all just kind of sitting there next to you uh, just kind of like keeping up a conversation my lord is there something on your mind oh uh, usually yes I've got a uh, lot to do uh, quite the uh, events to oversee so I apologize if I seem a little distracted well you haven't even touched any of your food. 
Well, I uh, just giving myself a break. I uh, ate quite my fill uh, a moment ago, and uh, just giving myself a bit of time to uh, let it settle. It looks really delicious. I, if you can make room, you should definitely try some. Give me uh, just a moment, and I think I can make some room. What's your favorite kind of food? Well, Titan's Grave, how can I not say seafood? I uh, don't get much seafood in the valley. <laughs> have you ever had a uh, fried octopus? No. No, I haven't. Quite tasty. I fried don't oct- think I've even had regular octopus. Oh. See if I can hunt for you. Actually hunt with your hands. Well, hunting, fishing, similar thing. Mm, I'd find that quite attractive. No. <laughs> ah, uh, if you excuse me one more time, I will be. Re- I will return momentarily. Yes, of course. I'll wait here for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he goes to stand up. Uh, let's pulls his chair back. Uh, he gets up. He goes over to the door. A servant opens the door. Uh, he walks inside, and then. Uh, a moment later, just like a moment later, uh, he comes. He comes out. He o- he opens the door. He walks over. He sits down and pulls his chair back in. Uh, and he says, "Sorry about that. Just a little bit of business." Uh, oh no worries. I mean, I'm sure you're a very busy person, and this is your party. I, I know you have other guests to attend to. I I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just had to meet you. Oh, I greatly appreciate that. It's been lovely meeting you. Well, is there another time we could meet? I think that could be arranged, yes. Really? You'd yes. spare some time for me? Oh, absolutely. Well, how about tomorrow? I think I could make that work, yes. Uh, are you staying in town? You said uh, Lady Stanway? Um, yes, yes, I am. Um... But I uh, you know that in uh, your polite society, it would be best if maybe we went in a neutral place. Exactly what I was thinking, yes. Uh, perhaps How the, about a walk uh, in a garden with a hedge maze? Well, that would be uh, the only hedge maze I know around here is mine. But we do have, they do have the uh, lovely gods uh, in Titan's Grave City. Uh, you may have seen them near... Uh, uh, Lady Stanway's home. Yes, that that actually would be wonderful. It would be great for me to get to <laughs> from the home I'm staying at. It's perfect. Wonderful. I'll meet you in the Rainshine Gardens then. Say around noon. That sounds perfect. Wonderful. Well, uh, I should get back to the party, and you should attend to your business. Until until tomorrow then. And she'll just gently extend a hand. Mm-hmm. He'll take it. And he'll <laughs> kiss the back of your youngest hand. And she'll do a little curtsy before gently walking down the stairs. Well, you gotta to... before you huh? get down the stairs. It's like you can stand up and like the servants come and move the table out of the way so oh, you can yes. get to the stairs, <laughs> and then you can make your way down. About at this time, dinner is starting to wrap up and everything. Uh, though I do have to ask: uh, Has Monty actually been starting the fire? Or did he... Oh, he didn't stop. Oh, he didn't stop. Okay, then. All right. Uh, about at this time, then, is uh, Monty, you will be able to get uh, that... Uh, you'll be able to get that bush started on fire. <laughs> cool. So it's just... And it just starts just crackling and... Cr- uh, yeah, crackling and... Uh... Can you all see this from the stairs? Uh, it's around a corner, so probably not immediately... Actually, give me a perception check, then, actually, as you're making okay. your way down. And then I'm not going to be anywhere near it. Are you just going to make... Okay, uh, give me oh, a stealth okay. check to get away from it, then. I only rolled a 10, so okay. that would have only been a 12. Uh, 18. Okay. Pass a, just a general perception check. Okay. Uh, you managed to start a fire and then make your way away. Where does Monty go uh, after he starts this fire? Are there any like balconies I can climb up to? 
Uh, there's pretty much the, for the back end of the house. There's pretty much the, just the terrace. Though there are the guest houses over in the direction you were at, um, and probably yeah, probably a balcony on one of those. You could probably get up to like a second floor balcony on one cool. of the guest houses. Sounds good. Wait, okay. um, you seem to like try and climb your way up. If I even need to, running jump. Oh, that's true. You can just yeah, just leap your way up, catch the railing, and just vault your way right up onto the yep. into the second floor. Um, you can see from the lights that this place is occupied, but it seems like the people are on the first floor, so you can either stay up on the balcony or you can go inside. There are balcony doors. I'll go stay on the balcony. Okay. And just right. as low as possible. All right. Uh, at that point, uh, you will you will hear as you're making your way down the stairs, and Tedros, as you're sitting in the, uh, as you're sitting out at the tables where people are starting to stand up, uh, you can hear someone out on the side sir just uh, or actually no not a servant uh one of the nobles who was like making their way around to that side just come hurrying back over go fire fire there's a fire over here excuse me there's a fire and everyone just like immediately panic just like breaks out you can just see like the slight orange glow coming from around the corner and smoke billowing up along that side of the house and uh both of you can see Dieter's head look in the direction of the fire, eyes narrowed, and just shake his head, uh, upset. Uh, before he goes up to the terrace and starts to yell out, Calm down, everyone, calm down. My servants have got this covered, but please, uh, for your own safety, please, uh, if I could have everyone make their way, uh, out towards the, out towards the gardens and the lawn, uh, we will have this taken care of momentarily. And everyone's gonna start making their way out. Uh, towards that way, uh, Tedros and Yule, the crowd in general, and like the servants are starting to kind of usher people in that direction. Tedros is not going to go anywhere until he can see Mudblanc. Okay, well, you don't see Mudblanc because Mudblanc is hiding like in the back of the estate uh, on a balcony somewhere. Yule would come down the stairs and look for Tedros, okay. not knowing anything about uh, him, knowing that they are, like, involved with Monty. Mm -hmm. um, I so thought about she... doing that conversation with you having your headphones off, but I forgot. <laughs> so she uh, went over um, to the... Uh, yeah, she'll go over to Tedros and probably just go is there a fire looks like it yeah and i don't know where it was oh gosh i don't know I... where my block is oh well i shouldn't be seen with him i mean i just had dinner with theater von stark yeah how was that um delightful it, it was fine i mean i i know he's a bad person but it was delicious food all right, well, I'm literally sitting next to him, so you probably shouldn't be seen with me either. So go ahead, go. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm just going to go back to the estate. I, I think overall tonight has been interesting. Can I have my bag back? Sure, yeah. She'll take her bag and she'll say, be safe, and then disappear into the crowd. Great, so you're heading, you're heading along with the crowd then. Yeah, she's heading along with the crowd and probably just going to go. She had said she was going to go back to the estate, but I think she's going to go back to the ship. Oh, okay, so you're going to go back to Lady Sandway's boat? Uh, oh, shoot. Yeah, because we're, we're far yeah, You're on an away. island. Yeah, we're yeah, like you all... a ways away. So yeah, she'll go back to the uh, Lady Sandway's boat. Okay, you can find Lady Sandway on the way over and she's like, you know, you can like, like the two of you can make your way over to the boat together is like you're, everyone's kind of like, panicked but just generally moving calmly there's enough uh there's like enough naval officers in the crowd that they're like able to keep the crowd generally calm and you know move things along without letting the nobility all panic yule's trying to just keep her calm and like try to make sure that she's not like seeming any different and she's mm -hmm. just gonna greet lady stanway and be like hi how how was the party for you oh it, oh it was lovely but uh i well this fire that's quite the Excitement. We should move. Yes. We should get away from here. At least dinner was over with. That's true, yes. I would have liked dessert, though. Oh, my dinner was dessert. <laughs> what a 
charming young lady you are. And she's gonna, she like, you know, takes your, your arm <laughs> hooked into hers and just like pats yeah. her elbow. And Yule just walks with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so what is Tedros doing then? Tedros is moving towards the last place that he saw on block. Okay. Um, as you're doing that, you'll notice that uh, it is starting to clear out to be just uh, like Dieter's servants and Dieter uh, over here. And uh, Dieter is going, uh, one of the servants is going to, like, and a bunch of them are moving in the direction of the fire, like, trying to go, and, like, there's a bucket brigade basically being put together. And one of them is going to come over to you and just be like, uh, excuse me, sir, we need you to uh, join the rest of the guests and move uh, to the other, to the, towards the lawns for your own safety. I will. I just have to make sure that uh, a person I came with is all right. I know they went in this direction. Can I see so. Tedros? Uh, make me a, uh, actually, yeah, did you, uh, I'm guessing the balcony you picked was one that would, like, overlook down by the... That was, that was hopefully the plan. Okay, then yes, you can see Tedros, like, being, like, I'm gonna talking to... gesture that Tedros, just, uh, just so Tedros can see, hopefully, not so the servants see. If, uh, if it's not possible, I'm not gonna do it, obviously. I'll, I'll have, uh, Tedros make a perception check to see if you can, like, catch his attention. 16. Yeah, okay, I'll say, yeah, you can just, like... As you're, like, talking to this person out of the corner of your eye, you can see movement. If you look up at, like, a balcony railing, you can see Mont Blanc just, like, crouch down and, like, uh, like you're not even crouch, like, laying down pretty much, like, sitting and, like, leaning out from behind, like, a big terracotta flower pot and just kind of, like, wave at you from behind there. I'm not sure where my friend is, but I would be more than happy to help. I have put out many fires... Uh, such fires in the past, I'd be more than happy to help. No, no, that's that's perfectly all right. We've uh, we've got this handled. So please, please, just uh, we, we, for the safety of all, all the guests, let's just let's have everyone move in this direction. Uh, but I I think there's a little bit of fire over there, and uh, as the guy is turning around, Tedros is going to use, going to try to see if he can use prestidigitation to set like a part of a bush like on fire. <laughs> like, give me a sleight of hand check. Come on. Uh, 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 am I any good at that? Uh, Plus 15. That's a 9. Oh. <laughs> I wish. Mm. Okay. Uh, it's it, Basically what happens is you go to say like over there, uh, but like he kind of like looks and looks back before you can like cast the spell and you can kind of just like, oh. you know, stop in the middle of the somatic components and make it look like you were just kind of gesturing. Yeah. Uh, so you don't like just cast the spell in front of him, but you then cannot actually finish casting the spell. Uh, uh, I don't see any. No, I think it's all just concentrated over here. So, uh, please, let's just uh, let's make our way over this way. Uh, and just let us handle this perfect. We don't need any uh, the party guests need to worry themselves with any of this. Oh, no. Tedros will nod a little bit and he will walk back only as far as he absolutely has to. Okay, yeah, there's, like, a group of people gathering over by, like, the fountains uh, that are, like, you yeah. know, doing, like, on being onlookers. Uh, are any of the people by the fountain uh, Lady Marietta? Uh, yes, you'll be able to find her. Tedros will uh, take a position over by her and say... A lot of excitement tonight. Yes, uh, quite a bit of excitement, it seems. Uh, I tried to see if there was anything that could be done. So I was going to lend a hand putting out the fire, but they seemed like they had it well in hand. Oh, that's very nice of you. Uh, I figured, you know, it takes a certain touch to make these things work if you're trying to control any fire that might burst out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's just a very strange smile as her eyes just, like, dart over to her mother, which is, like, a few feet away, and then back to you. Do you mind if I tell you a story? No, not at all. Um, once a, a long time ago, once, once upon a time, a very long time ago, uh, there was a man... had been done wrong by people he trusted. And he spent a long time 
by himself. Not necessarily by himself in terms of not seeing any people, but not really being able to trust again. Well, after some time, um, that man returns to the place from which he left. This time he had people he could trust. And he gave others a chance to repent for what they'd done wrong. But they didn't. And the people that he came with supported him in his every endeavor. And like him, these people had many, many different talents, many different skills, but all together made quite the, made quite the group. That's, uh, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, when I think of stories like that, I think to myself that I wish I had people like that in my corner. It would be nice, she says very quietly, just like as her mother is distracted and looking somewhere else. Well, um, you know, if there are, if you would want to, perhaps, uh, find any it, I, I'm just saying if it were me I would be real excited to find such like minds and interact with people like that mm -hmm. um, as you're talking to Lady Mar Marietta I would like to jump over and find out what Monty has been doing now that the fire has started and it's basically just Dieter and his servants on um, it's Dieter and his servants Lutz and Monty are basically like the only people over here the guest right. houses have been emptied out uh people got like people like hurried out like with their clothes bundled up in their arms and like in front of their you know bits yeah uh, as they like ran off to go like hide behind some bushes to get dressed oh fuck all right okay Butterflies. I'm gonna vault over the railing. Okay. Hit the ground. Mm hmm. Oh, Dieter! A word. He just straightens his back, turns and looks down in your direction, turns and he mutters something to Lutz, who hurries off in the direction of all the servants, and then he starts making his way slowly down the stairs, staring at you. I'm gonna roll up my sleeves. Mm -hmm. Slowly start to approach. Actually, I don't want to damage these nice clothes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start unbuttoning the shirt. Okay. Throw it off. Okay. And as I do, I'm going to wolf out. All right. Uh, as you do, his eyes widen and he gives you a very interested yet confused sort of look. Um, and let's see... Uh, as you're doing that, and you're kind of in, like, vaguely in the same, in the view of, in the, like, sort of range of the, uh, other servants. Yeah. Uh, as you do that, uh, I'm actually make, ask you to make a perception check if something happens. Okay. Do I have a, no, that's, that's a smell-based one, never mind. Yeah, this is, this is sight-based. Seven plus four, D&D &D Beyond. Hmm, hmm. I should have switched into physical dice. Yeah, but, meh. Yeah, fair. Um, okay. Um, all you notice then is as you do that, there's sort of a slight shimmer to the air around you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really weird because it's as though you're seeing everything in your surroundings up to about a 10 foot radius from where you are uh, is almost like you're seeing it in double. Interesting. Like almost like the image of your surroundings has been imposed over your surroundings minus you hmm. um, and Tedros for a second it looked like you thought you could see Mont Blanc uh, actually Tedros since you're you're within uh, viewing range of this as well go ahead and make me a perception check although the servants are going to come start shepherding people further away uh, as this is happening uh, uh, that's 14 okay 
Um, she's not she's not really trying to hide it, so that is enough for you to see it. Um, over to the side, uh, not with the crowd, kind of over in the still in the dining area, leaning against a wall. Uh, you see the uh, you see the patron of the circus appear where she wasn't before. You see her actually just appear out of thin air, waving a hand. As you see Montblanc making his way over, and there's the slightest second where you can see him starting to wolf out before there's just like a, and then like it's like that whole section of of the area that he's in is just like edited back to normal, and he is just no longer visible. Tedros is booking it. He's he immediately books it straight towards the house. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, one of the some of the people are gonna try and like stop you, but then like they're focusing on trying to get the rest of the crowd. Uh, pushed back, and the crowd is pushed back out of line of sight. Dieter is making his way down the stairs. Uh, Mont Blanc, you can see, you can see Tedro start booking it towards you cool. as Dieter makes his way down the stairs towards you. Yeah, we'll do. Well, that is interesting. No. Oh, yeah, I don't remember you being that hairy. No response. All right. What are you doing? Charging. Roll initiative. The three, uh, both of you, everyone but you will. Can I join initiative just to do actions on the ship? I yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead and roll it. You're you're a good ways away with Lady Sanway. Yeah, like, I'm switching guys the physical both, dice. So. That's a five. Yeah. Oh boy. Seventeen. All right. I'm pumped for this fight. I'm not in. <laughs> it would be great if uh, the dice didn't bounce all over off your sides of your screen. Uh, right. it's 11. Okay, okay, Tedros, 11, Monty, Mike, a 5 you said total? Yeah. Oh boy, uh, Yule got a 17. I did. Okay, and let's see, 4. Dieter got a natural 20. Of oh my. He did. Hey, at least he used it on that though, at least he used it on that. And... The other member of this engagement. Ooh, she got a 21. Great. Uh, though she is not. So you go to, you lunge forward. Um, basically, and this is what Tedros can see, is uh, the illusion that is up, that is covering the fight, uh, basically is going to just shift over so that to continue covering uh, things and just kind of she's just going to adjust it to make sure that as the as the crowd is being pushed away, none of this is visible. Oh, cool, good. That mm -hmm. is so cool. Mm -hmm. She's using major image to duplicate the landscape as though you two weren't there. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> imposing that over the two of you like a like a screen. Let them fight. Basically. Amazing. Well, more like if they're going to fight, we don't want the crowd seeing it. We're going to maintain decorum here. Mm. Um, I love so it. That, that's her turn. That's going to bring us to Dieter's turn. What who, did Dieter get? Uh, 20. Natural 20. Whew. Yep. Natural 20 for a 20. Oh, he's raging to go. All right. So he's going to... Oh, yeah. He's going to do that. Oh, uh, wait. 17. Uh, oh, I actually forgot to roll for one five. more person. I technically got a 19. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, because I didn't add my initiative. I forgot. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So you got a 19, you said? Yeah. Forgot okay. to add my initiative. Okay. Um, so, uh, Dieter is going to uh, just wave his hand in your direction, and as he does... Uh, you can see uh, Mont Blanc, the ground around you just turns inky black as though just like, uh, yeah. as though just a uh, dark liquid is just like inky mm -hmm. liquid is just sort of like welling up from under the grass. Uh, and as that happens, uh, a just the whole, a whole 20 foot, basically the entire illusion that you're in, mm -hmm. uh, this whole 20 foot area uh, with you at the center of it giant inky black crab legs extend out of it and start trying to wrap around you. Cool. And restrain you. Cool. As he casts his version of Evard's black tentacle. Cool. 
Strength save? Um, let's see. First time, starts his turn there. Uh, dexterity save, actually. Ah, not advantage then. Mm hmm. I bet you it's going to be bad because, you know, DD Beyond's been fucking me tonight. Of course! Five! Stop. Get, roll physical dice. All right. Uh, so it rolls <laughs> good and then it hits the side of the screen and goes three. Uh, ah. Yeah. Oof. All right. Uh, luckily, this is bludgeoning damage, so I believe you have it. Resistance, yeah, because I'm. Yeah, you... yeah. So you have this damage. So it would be fifteen points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, you reduce that to seven. But you are cool. restrained as as you go to lunge towards them, they just wrap around you. Great. And he just says, and he just holding it. He's holding a hand out. And he just says, "Sully, couldn't ha couldn't uh, couldn't behave yourself for one evening." No response. All right. Uh, and then that will bring us to Yule. What's Yule doing on oh, Yule doing over on Lady Stanway's boat? Uh, so Yule uh, just gets this weird feeling. Like she figured that, you know, she was gonna go back to the ship and everyone would just sort of meet up at the ship. Mm -hmm. um, and so with them not coming back and it's been a little bit and it seems like a lot of people are flooding in from the party um, she's just going to grab her cards and cast augury because oh, I mean... she wants to know if she should go back okay all right uh, let me just check one thing really quickly okay uh so unfortunately the casting time of augury is one minute oh it's like so it's 10 rounds yeah okay so she can't roll it to determine like i thought it was to just determine if the action she takes is going to be fortunate or not it, it is but in order to cast the spell it takes a full minute to cast the spell which is ten okay. which is 10 rounds yeah which is 10 rounds yeah Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It's not one you can just like pop off in or in like one moment. You like actually basically need to sit down and do like a full reading of the cards. That takes about a minute, even if you're going quickly. I mean, I'm fine with that. She's not trying to join the battle. She just wants okay. to know if she should go back or not. Okay. So you're gonna start. You're gonna yeah. start doing it. So She's gonna just gonna start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, keep track of this for me. So that's one round. So every time we'll pass by you, we'll just add one. So just keep track of how many rounds it is. Okay. All right, that'll bring us to Tedros. Uh, Tedros is going to pick up speed. Okay. Um, like he will like pick up as much speed as possible, and then mm -hmm. just jump straight through whatever the widest window is, and just straight in through the. In so you're passing by them to go inside the house. Yeah. They Oh, are they outside the house? Yeah, they're like they're out of like on the lawn, right? In front oh, okay. Of then yeah, then he's uh, he's gonna... so basically here's here's what you see. Uh, basically, it's you saw Montblanc making his way over. You saw him for a split second before uh, the circus patron appeared and just edited him out of existence. Um, at which point you see Dieter do something, but you can't see what it is because it fits perfectly inside of the illusion. Uh, and then. Like you can hear them talking to each other, but like you you can actually Montblanc hasn't said anything, so you can't hear him. But you can hear Dieter looking in at, towards him and talking to Sully uh, in that direction. Yeah, uh, he will keep running straight for where he saw the blast, uh, and as soon as he gets in, uh, he will. As soon as he gets to within where he can actually see what's happening, mm -hmm. uh, he will stop and look at the tentacles at Dieter. Well, so if you so you go enter into mm -hmm. the illusion. Okay, so if you enter in the illusion, the tentacles fill the entire area of the illusion. Yeah. So it's like you burst through, you make it through there. There's like a weird tingling feeling as you enter through it, and as soon as you do, it's like you pass through it, and then all of the scene just appears in front of you. Uh, you see the ground is just covered in this inky black liquid that these, like, black crab claws are just like, erupting out of all over the place. And as you make it through, you realize you've run into a field of them you couldn't even see from an inch in front of them yeah. before. Uh, so I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw as soon as you enter into that area. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see Mont you can see 
werewolf Monblock being like restrained by a bunch of these that have wrapped around him. Uh, 19. Okay, you make the save, however. So let's see. Uh, yeah, you you like you jump in, like you uh, lunge your way through, and able to just like shove your way and elbow your way past all these things. They're constantly just like moving around you, trying to grab onto you. And uh, you are free to move still. Uh, Tedros grabs his holy symbol. Mm -hmm. Um, and pulls off what looks like a coin and mm -hmm. flips it in the air. And then when it reaches its apex, you just see a bunch of uh, owl feathers start raining from it as it like expands into a, like a moon. Mm -hmm. And he will cast a spell magic. On yes. The, Ooh, uh, nice. Tentacles. But I'm going to need you to roll that to spell magic because it is not. It is above a third level spell. All right. Does a oh boy um, and it's my ability score, right? Spell yeah. casting, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, without modifier, right? Um, without without proficiency, I mean. I believe so. Yes. It'll under okay. your spells. It'll say your spell casting modifier, and you said that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, then it's a fourteen. That is exactly the number you uh, need. Well, you need you need to match it, not beat it, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So yeah. So you do that, and then yeah, they just start raining down, and as each of them touches each of those crab claws, it just starts to like dissolve. There's just like this silvery touch, as though like burning them away with acid that just spreads from each of them as they rain down among around them, and all of these claws just melt away. And Montlog, like, you feel the ones on you just oh, yeah. vanish off of you before the liquid sinks back down into the ground and uh, uh, Dieter looks very unhappy about this good oh because I'm next you are rude aren't you and then yeah that makes it Monty's turn I'm gonna snarl mm -hmm. and just race for Dieter okay uh, and oh, man I'm kind of scared to do this right now uh, bonus action I'm gonna drag the wolf claws across my chest and activate my crimson right okay and I will take uh, four damage. Okay. And they become lightning. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go for predatory strikes on him. Okay. If I can get up to him at least. Yeah, you can get to him. All right. I'm not going to roll on that. <laughs> uh, 17 plus 8 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay, cool. And that'll be seven slashing damage. Ooh. Okay. Plus four lightning. Okay, so 11 total. Yep. Okay. And yeah, so you just slash across him, and uh, you can see your, your lightning, your claws just, like, dig into him. As they do, you can see that as you, like, slash through his skin, uh, you can see that basically what happens is you slice through his skin, but then your claws kind of, like, scrape against a layer of chitin underneath Ew. his skin. Yep. And but I'm, then you, you heard him. It clearly hurts, yeah. but that is why his armor yeah. class is higher than and it should be. Wolf Monty is significantly taller than normal Monty, so mm -hmm. just going to look down and smile. Okay. That's my then, turn. All right. That will bring us back up to the top with uh, the patron. She is for now going to just keep maintaining the illusion and not really doing much of anything. Cool. Bringing us to Dieter. Dieter is going to spend a bonus action, mm -hmm. and a spectral claw appears out of the ground, yeah. uh, the surface right between the two of you. Very similar fashion to a spectral tentacle that Monty can summon. Interesting. Uh, and it is going to make an attack against Monty. It'd be cool if I was resistant to, it, resistant to his warlock stuff too, but eh. It know. would be, but, if, but there's reasons why not. Let's go. Thematically, it's because the bad guys are always dicks yep all right oof that is though a uh 16 to hit that it does hit okay so you take some cold damage It'll be eight points of cold damage okay as it as it, the claw just like slashes at you from behind yep and then he is going to actually he goes so he reaches in to his coat to draw a weapon out Mm -hmm. And you can see he actually he his hand actually passes over the rapier that he keeps at his side, mm -hmm. and you can see he reaches back into there's a slit in the lining of his coat. 
Yeah. And he reaches back into that and he pulls out just this big, ugly boarding axe. Cool. That he keeps inside the lining of his coat at all times. Of course he does. Actual weapon. Yeah, of course. The, the, the rapier is just for show. And then he's going to swing that at you twice. Yeah, go for it. All right. So that to hit. Ooh, 13 for the first one, though. Misses. All right. And a 15 for the second one. Just hits. All right. So you manage to, like, dodge back for the second one. And then another one, he comes and swings it forward at you. Or... Uh, 12 points of uh, slashing damage. So six. Yes, which you that one you have. So six. Okay. It just sinks that into your shoulder right there. And uh, yeah, he's like chief grit and concentration as he yanks it out and then says, Well, I didn't want to do this, but I guess let's go. And that is his turn, bringing us to Yule again. I'll say. So I'll say. Oh, yeah. Oh, I very yeah. much did. Uh, Yule, you are... Uh, you're muted. Just drawing more cards and okay. staring at them with very confused looks on okay. your face. All right. That's the second round. Okay. Uh, the ring is Tedros. Uh... Shit. Um... Uh, Tedros is quite pissed. This is not. This was not the fucking plan. This mm -hmm. was not the fucking plan at all. Um, but he grits his teeth and um, he grits his teeth and he will uh, cast. I hate it. Uh, he will cast Bless uh, on himself and uh, okay. Mont Blanc. Hmm. And then he will spend the rest of whatever he's doing just looking around, trying to get take stock of like what's around them. Okay. Try not to be too caught off guard. Okay. Um, all right. Then that will bring us to Mont Blanc. All right. Action. Predatory Strike. Mm -hmm. Natural 20. <laughs> oh boy, alright. Alright, so that'll be for the crit. We're looking at 17 slashing damage. Oof, ouch. Alright. And then the lightning will be 5. Uh, that Wait, was that a double? Yeah. 2 plus 3. How'd you get a 5? What? Oh, you rolled 2 dice. Okay. Yeah. So 17. So oh, 22 total. Yep, and then bonus action, hybrid strike. Okay. Yep. Oh! 19 plus 5. Or 19 plus yeah, 8. Yeah, that'll Ni hit. 19 plus 8, 27. Yep, yeah, that'll hit, that'll hit. And I don't add the modifier on this one, or do I? Because this is different. Hybrid strikes are different. Yeah, it's different. No, you do You do add the modifier on this one. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. That's max for the slashing, so 12 slashing. Oof, all right. And then... One lightning. All right. So. Yeah. He's. Uh, uh, yeah. You like sink your claws into the side of his throat and just like pull them across. Yeah. And you can see like even under his neck there is that layer of chitin. You can feel you actually get your nails under one of the plates and almost pry it up off of him, as like out from under his neck as you like pull your claws across and another one you bring across him. He's like staggers back a few steps. All right. All right. And then, let's see, at that point, he's going to, uh, breathing heavily, just, uh, and breathing heavily, just bleeding down the side of his neck and, like, his shirt torn, is going to look at, uh, look at, in kind of two directions to say, a little help, if you don't mind. And then that's going to bring us to the top of the order, where the patron is going to get involved. <laughs> And I think what she's going to do is that seems like the kind of thing she would do. Uh, Mont Blanc. Yeah. I need a wisdom saving throw. Cool beans. Uh, 15. Or 16, sorry. Okay. You are blessed. Oh, plus a D4, right? Yes. Roll that. 19. Just make it. That bless. So as she attempts to use dominate person on you. 
you make it by virtue of Tedros's bless. You can feel like it's not gonna. You're like you can feel like your mind clouding and just all of a sudden like getting tunnel vision on her as she's standing over there, just kind of like waving her fingers in a hypnotic pattern. Uh, but then like just this light, this silvery light from that bless just flares into life, and you manage to shake out of it. And then she just rolls her eyes, tosses the wine glass that she was still holding, and it just shatters into the ground. Uh, also, if she does that, the illusion drops because that would have been a concentration spell. Oh, cool. Uh, and then she is going to uh, move her full movement over to get next to Tedros, but that's all she can do. Uh, bringing us to Dieter, who is going to... Let's see. What's he going to do? Oh, wait. Oh, crap. I forgot about that. I forgot about a thing he has, but it's okay because that's, that's, that's to your benefit. Uh, he's going to start by uh, having the claw attack yep. Monty, so that is going to be uh, 23 to hit. Yeah. All right. I forgot to do... Uh... No, I didn't. Never mind. It must have, already auto- it must have auto-calculated the uh, orc thing for crits, because oh, okay. I didn't do that. Oh, okay. Huh. All right, that is going to be 11 points of cold damage. Okay. Wait, what was it to hit? Uh, it was a 23. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, 11 points of cold damage, and then he's going to come at you again with two swings from the axe. Yep. That's not a crit, but it's 27 to hit. Yep. All right. So six, six points of not six points of slashing damage. So you have that to three. Cool. And then he's going to come in with a second attack. Yep. Which is a twelve. Nope. That when he he comes swinging, he swings and hits you in the side, and he spins around, comes swinging in from the top. You're able to just like block it with your forearm, and the axe blade just like stops like to the side of your face. I'm bloodlusted now. Ooh. So I have to make a DC eight wisdom save to start of my turn or attack the nearest creature. Okay. Well, which right now is him. Yeah. All right. It's also uh, blessed. That's yes. Right. And that will bring D- us to Yule. And it's a DC eight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so Yule, who is still reading the cards. Still reading the cards. I decided to actually draw some cards. So nice. far, I've gotten a seven, an eight, and a two. Nice. Don't know what that means. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, then, after Yule, but before Tedros, uh, up from the terrace, you see Lutz the manservant just vault over the terrace and land on the ground. And as he does, his face splits in half from the forehead down to his nose and along the chin, like uh, like the dog from Red Bull, where it like spreads across and opens up into this giant like angler fish maw. And his skin just fades from its normal color to uh, dull gray. Fins extend out of his elbow, and his hair lengthens into a series of like tentacles hanging off the back of his head. And his eyes did, turn to a cloudy dark red. Did you and... watch the new Resident Evil show? No. Ah. Uh, I was talking about like the original movie. There's more dogs. Oh, great! Uh, oh, and then he is going to let out a horrible screech. Uh, positioning himself so that uh, Monty and Tedros both need to make wisdom saves against him. You're blessed. Uh, 17. You're good? You managed to shake out just like this horrible ringing noise in your in your ear. Uh, that might not be good for me, though. Uh, I... <laughs> I'm also blessed. Yes, you are. Let's roll that. Uh, wisdom saving throw? Mm-hmm. I don't suppose that 12 succeeds, does it? That fails by one. Do I All have right. something else in the <laughs> uh, I don't think I have it. All uh-huh. right. Uh-huh. Nah, I, I don't. I don't think All so. right. Then Tedros is stunned until the end of Lutz's next turn. So Bless would go away. Uh, does stun go away? Does Bless go Does Do you lose concentration when you're stunned? Unless it's, if it says you're incapacitated when you're stunned, then yeah. Okay, let me double check that, but I think if that's the case, then I think you're right. Yeah, the sun creature is incapacitated. Okay, then yes, you are stunned. Uh, you just like are out of it. I don't know if the current do the current incapacitated rules say that you lose concentration. Is that for D- I don't, is that for one D and D though? 
I think I think for one D and D, like I know for one D and D, they specify that you lose concentration. I don't know if you do it right now. Let me check. Real quick. Mm -hmm. You definitely do lose concentration. Uh, let me just check concentration. I think. Let me check uh, concentration real quick. Make this fair. Yeah, incapacitate just says you can't take actions or reactions for right now. Right. I was just going to check for concentration. Because it would say it under concentration, under magic. Uh, da -da -da -da, spell casting. Being, yeah, if you're being incapacitated or if you die, you lose concentration. Okay, there we go. Yes, it's listed under concentration. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Unfortunately. I, yep, okay, so Bless does go away. And Tedros is stunned until the end of his next turn. Or sorry, until the end of Lutz's next turn. Uh, which will actually bring us to Tedros' turn, which you are just so out of it from that horrible screeching noise, which seems to, like, rattle your brain from the inside, uh, that you are just completely out of it, and that'll make it Monty's turn. Two more attacks. Okay, go ahead. Uh, 17 plus 8 for the first. Yeah, 17 plus 8. Wait, oh, 17. I was thinking 7 plus 8. Yeah, so 25. And hits. bonus action attack. Same, 17 plus 8. Okay, go ahead and roll the damage. Uh, first one is going to be 9 slashing. Okay. And 1 lightning, so 10 total. Okay. And the second is 10 slashing and 2 lightning, so 12 total. Okay, for the second one, because I forgot he can do this. Oh, great. Um, what is that? Uh, what, what was the damage on the second one? You said 10 and 2? 10 and 2. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, the claw actually reaches out and interposes a bit and reduces that damage by 7. So reduces it down to 5. Oh, great. I forgot that he can do that. He should have done that last round, but he can only do that once. All right. But uh, Dieter's not looking great. You do manage you, you, like, it catches you and makes you only go, like, a shallow cut on that one. But the first one did do some some damage. And Dieter is not looking good. And he looks very unhappy about that. Um, bringing us back up to the top. Oh, I, had, I had to make a wisdom save. Oh, that's right. 13. Yeah, you're fine. Um, all right. Let's see. She already used that, so she can't use it again. Um, yeah, I guess uh, she's going to do that. That's her best bet. Um, all right. Uh, the good lady is going to uh, leave Tedros, actually, and she's going to move up to Mont Blanc. Oh, cool. And uh, she is going to actually come up behind Mont Blanc and make two claw attacks of her own with mm. those long nails. Sure. And just s try and sink them into your shoulders from behind. Sure. And... First one's in that one, though. Cool. Like, as you're thrashing around, you bump her with your elbow, and she just, like, goes falling to the ground. Then she comes back for a second one. Uh, which, that is going to be a 15 to hit. Just hits. Okay. Uh, for, uh, it's going to be nine points of slashing damage reduced to four. Cool. All right. So she, yeah, she just feel her just sink her claws into your shoulder and just like drag them down your back. She's just like, now let's not be rude party guests, please. Fuck off. I can't do that. And then that'll bring us to Dieter, who is going to uh, actually, uh, he is going to withdraw as an action. No. Fucking... And then he's going to start making, he's going to move his 30 feet uh, up towards the stairs. Uh, up towards the house. Uh, that brings us to Yule. Yule now draws an another eight. <laughs> All right. All right, that'll bring us to Lutz, who uh, he is going to move over, and he is going to, he is going to go for Tedros, uh, and he is going to uh, make a bite and a claw attack against Tedros. Which does for, stun just gives advantage? It doesn't give like an auto. You said crit. Tedros is stunned until the end of his next turn, so he wouldn't be stunned anymore. No, he's the, and, and until the end of Lutz's next turn. Oh, I'm still stunned. Yeah. Then it's so he's still stunned. Yeah. Okay. I believe yeah. I, I believe it's an auto crit. No, that's just uh, paralyzed. That's uh, paralyzed. That's the difference. That's right. I, I always okay. forget the difference. Yeah. Right. Because otherwise monks would be ridiculous. You put a monk with a rogue and just like yeah. end the world. Uh, okay. So two attacks with advantage. 
So. Da, da, da. 19 on the first, 18 on the second. Yeah. Those hits? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, seven damage on the first one, and six damage on the second for third total. That's cool. just this. <laughs> All right. And then that will bring us to Tedros. You shake out of it like you shake out of it like as his claw is like slashing across your back, and that like weird flat mouth is like closing down around your shoulder. Okay. Uh, and Tedros, this time will meet your swarm. Uh, yeah. Um, he oh, by will... the way, I forgot to mention uh, Mont Blanc. You recognize the silhouette of Lutz as the creature you saw in the water outside Mumbleton Estate. No, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Monty doesn't give a shit at this point. But mm, fair. noted. Uh, Tedros will grab mm -hmm. his holy symbol uh, and just as it had like a couple days before, this uh, 15 foot radius circle of light will, moonlight will appear above, underneath him, mm -hmm. and you'll just see a bunch of owls flying up as he casts Spirit Guardians. Ooh, okay, all right. Does that take effect uh, immediately as you cast it? Um, obviously, I will designate um, Mont Blanc and uh, I think it's at the start of uh, when uh when a creature is, enters the area for the first time time on a turn or starts its turn there. Okay. So, and just, okay, so enters it on, I believe that counts as like when you cast the spell. Yeah. Uh, cool. And, uh, uh, you can have some of this. I'm fine with that. Uh, oh. Enough. If Sam oh. freezes, do we win automatically? Do it in range. Did I freeze? Yeah. yeah. Am I frozen? Nope. No, you don't. Nope. No, you don't. My back. I can never tell yeah. if I'm back or not. There's a bit of a delay. Okay, weird. Cool. Yeah, there's a delay for you too. I don't know why that's happening. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. I think that's what we get. Nope. You, you freeze uh, and then auto we win. win. All right. So, uh, Spirit Guardians? Yes. Uh, All right. Spirit Guardians. Uh, it'll deal 12 damage. Okay, wisdom save then, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so Lutz rolls wisdom. Lutz got a 7 on the wisdom save. Good. Yeah, fuck you, Lutz. Enjoy that. And, um, Tedros will try and, um, if he can, he will try and move a little bit further away, not to provoke an attack of opportunity, but he'll move a little bit closer to where, um, to where Mont Blanc is. See if we okay. can catch somebody else in that. Okay, I believe you would actually have caught, you would have caught um, the circus patron in that as well. Fantastic. And uh, she got a wisdom save. She got an 18 on hers. Okay. Uh, hmm. If it matters, it is necrotic damage, not great damage. Okay. Uh, don't worry about it, though. It appears that she takes no damage. As the they just kind of spread or as they're passing by, they actually just kind of spread around her, uh, almost just like almost like a rock, uh, a rock in a river. How the water just kind of naturally parts around it, kind of like that. Just the water, the the spirits just flow around her and just pa bypass her harmlessly. I think I've fallen in love. <laughs> oh my god, she's amazing. Well, she's gonna kill oh. me and Tedros, so it's you can still love her if you want. I'm sorry, I'm obsessed with her. She's an icon. Uh, okay, is that your turn? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, that will... Uh, oh, I forgot to mention Dieter, Dieter's bonus action. The reason he didn't attack Monty with the claw is he moved it over to by, be by himself. Great. He's prioritizing defense over attacking Monty. Aww. And then that'll make it Monty's turn. Wisdom save. Oh yeah. Nine. 
So I just I succeed. The DC's eight. Oh, does it not go up each turn? Or does it just stay at eight? Yeah, man, it's eight. That's what it says. So. Huh. All right. I guess it's just yeah, it's a really low DC. Because otherwise that would really suck for your character to just constantly be attacking your friends. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna about, like snap out of my bloodlust, not attack this patron because I don't give a shit, and mm -hmm. I'm not gonna disengage or anything. But I'm okay, gonna, so I'm gonna go for Dieter. Okay, so she's gonna, uh, she's gonna attack, take an attack of opportunity against you then. At least it's only one. Yeah. Uh, Twenty-four to hit. Why do I even bother? Yep. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be 10 points of slashing damage. Five. Mm -hmm. And back up to Dieter. All right. You're, you're up right next to him. Didn't know you were such a coward. Two attacks. All right. Uh, 23. Mm hmm. Bonus action. 26. All right. Fuck this guy. Yeah, please. Uh,. 11 slashing. I would offer don't fuck this guy. <laughs> no, I'm gonna... All right. In a not nice way. 11. And a, yep. Dead. Uh, 3 lightning. Okay. And then the second one... Yeah, 12 slashing. 4 lightning. 12 slashing, 4 lightning. So... 16 damage. Okay. Yeah. The the claw intercepts and reduces that by 8. Wish my and it looks like that. basically it reduces it and your claws are what? It can eventually. Oh, that's right. Yep. Uh so you like it, it, it catches your like it clamps down around your arm and your claw but your claw like you do pry up one of the plates on his neck and you can just see like muscle and tendon beneath as you have basically just well, you've got him to death's door good but the tentacle just managed to keep him alive uh that will make it I'm gonna spit some uh, blood in his face alright that'll bring us back to the top of the order with he likes uh, it. Uh, Lady S she's going to I can't with you hmm Let's see. Yeah, she's just gonna follow up. Uh, she's gonna follow up after you, and she's just gonna make two, two more claw attacks against Monty. Oh, go after somebody else. No, oh, oh, she's she's going after you because you've almost got Dieter. Does she have to? All right. Oh yeah, never mind. That is a crit. Oh, cool beans. So, I'll roll the. I'll just roll double dice. I want double it. All right, that is going to be... Uh, okay, with a crit, that is going to be 14 points of slashing damage. Reduce to seven. So reduce to seven. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, she seems to be very much unhappy about that. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, and then the second attack is going to be a 24 to hit. Oh, yeah, Yes, of 24. And that's going to be eight points of slashing damage reduced to four. Uh, four. Yep. I could take a lot of damage when I'm in my wolf form. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you're basically a barbarian. It's great. Especially you're at, what, level 5 and you're taking all this? Yeah, I have 75 max HP, so. Yep, yep, yep. Alright. What's your armor class? 15. I had no idea Yule has his higher armor class Yeah, you're a monk. Monty. Dex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get that Dex and stuff. Dex and yeah, wisdom. but my hit points are freaking mm -hmm. 33, so. Alright. Uh, then Dieter is going to... Dieter's turn. Uh, he's gonna have the claw. He's gonna have the claw attack, Monty. Sure. He's trying to get away as best he can. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be with his. What is this? It's fifteen. That just hits. Okay. For eight more cold damage. Ooh, I'm not doing great now. All right. And I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll for myself to see if he's if he's feeling bold or if he wants to gamble this or if he wants to try. No, no, he's he. Yeah, okay. Uh, he he locks eyes with you and tightens his grip on the axe. He's like blood is just like gushing out the side of his neck from where your claw claw got to him. He's barely standing. He tightens his grip on the axe and just says. 
You shouldn't have come back, Sully. And he's gonna go and he's gonna try and attack and spin the axe at you. He's gonna make two attacks. Yeah, go for it. All right, first attack is a. Where is he? Where is he? First attack is. It's an eleven. It's only an eleven. Misses. I'm gonna catch All right. it. Just throw it back in his face. All right. Second attack. Second attack is a twenty-three. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And then that's gonna be max four. Uh, twelve points of slashing damage, oh, but reduced to six. Reduced to six. So you are still up at the end of his turn. He gambled. And it didn't go too well. Uh, bringing us to Yule. Another round of... Yule draws a 10. Mm -hmm. All right. That'll bring us to Lutz. Of course. Who, yeah, Lutz, who sees that his, his master is doing terribly and facing down basically a werewolf. Uh, is going to make his way over. Does, does Tedros have a melee weapon out? Tedros has no, but he does have a Oh, that's right. You have, uh, you have, okay, you have both of those. So Lutz take, starts his turn. So uh, let's see. Lutz will. Uh, actually, oh, I didn't. I don't think I actually wrote down the. Do you remember how much damage it did last time? Twelve. No, if he twelve. Fails. Okay. Yeah, I forgot he did. I forgot to write that one down. Okay. Uh, I believe he fails again. For yeah, that is a uh, ten. Sixteen this time. Ooh. All right. All right. And then you you get an attack opportunity as he moves away from you with Warcaster. Um, and Tedros is going to. Uh, he's going to ring the bell. Okay. Oh, oh no 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 no! It has to be. I think it has to be. In the, let me double check. I think it might have to be an attack. Uh, attack roll spell. No, it, it's has to have a cast in time of one action and targets only that creature. All so right, you can, can make a wisdom saving throw for Toll the Dead. That is a natural 20. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, and then he is going to just like leap through the air at Monty's back, also, just trying to, like, all three of them just focusing on keeping, trying to keep De Monty from killing Dieter. Yeah, here it is, probably. Let's see. Let's see. He doesn't do a lot of damage. Doesn't so need to. We, it, you, you have it though. Doesn't Let's need to. Uh, that is going to be a eight plus six fourteen to hit. Oops. Misses. All right, and comes the claw. Is a. Uh, plus six is a. That's twenty four. Okay. Yeah. All right. One d six plus four. Mm -hmm. Eight points of splashing damage reduced to half is four. I'm gonna have to relentless endurance that because I had two hit points. Ooh, yeah. But you are still up. And that makes it Tedros's turn. Uh. Okay. Um. Can Tedros get to where he can put a hand on? Monty. Everybody else moved like thirty feet. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think of this room around him. But yes, there's there's a sp there's a sp there's space around Monty. Where you can like shove in next to the other two and get to him. Okay. Uh, then Tedros is going to, as he's walking, and say, "Um, Mont Blanc, finish this." Uh, and he will cast um second level healing word. Okay. Oh yeah. He gets back a few more. Uh, seven from that. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, and then Tedros will uh, just reach in there and use an action mm -hmm. uh, to use his uh, healing hands. Okay. Uh, he'll restore another five hit points for it. Nice. Oh, All nice. right. Uh, which is almost like giving him back almost 24 hit points, given how much he loves he has. Yeah. Uh, all the resistance. Uh, and yeah, that'll be it. And every, I'm assuming if they're all on top of Monty, then they're all 
in range of spirit. Yes. Card. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's true. Uh, that'll be so the start of their turns. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. the first time on a turn. True. Does that count if you move yourself? It's over the first. It's the first time on a turn. I guess so. Yeah. All right. They all need to roll. All right. So that's gonna be well. Two need to roll. Uh, once again, they continue just passing it around Lady S. Uh, so. Lux is gonna roll. He gets a ten. Oh. Dieter is gonna roll. Dieter gets eighteen. Okay. Uh, so then Dieter can take half of seventeen damage. Oh. Dieter's down. He had two hit points left. Damn it. I mean, he's down. He's not oh, dead. He he will be. Uh. -huh. And then uh, Lutz takes how much? Uh, the full seventeen. Okay. Poor Lutz. Just getting buffeted <laughs> by these. <laughs> All right, that will make it Monty's turn. I look down. Oh yeah, you may look down and you make a wisdom oh, saving throw. What you do? Come on, seventeen plus four. Woo! Okay. I look back at Tedros. Mm-hmm. Nod of thanks. Mm-hmm. Look down at Dieter. I got mm -hmm. him attack. Action mm -hmm. bonus action. All right. And if this hits, auto crit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 17 plus 8. Yep. All right. So that's two. You don't have to roll damage. That's two death saves. Yeah, I want to roll the damage anyway. Okay. Oh, it was max on the crit. 18 slashing. Nice. Oh, it didn't add my... It did, okay, it does not add oh, my okay. uh, oh, good to know. Okay. thing. So that'll oh, be an been additional down before. three. Okay. So that'd be 21. Okay. And then bonus action. Mm hmm. 14 plus 8. That'll hit. All right. So, uh, how exactly do you finish off Dieter Von Stark? Claw around the throat, like where they pry mm -hmm. the plate off, and just lift yep. him into the air. Mm hmm. Shake him a little bit so he's conscious. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Did it mean nothing to you, any of it? They were fun, I suppose. I'm just going to rip his head off. With All my right. jaws, just... Okay. Uh, you go and you... Yeah, you just sink your jaw in around his neck. Uh, as you do, though, a just collection of those claws just appears in a portal behind him. And just they just all wrap around him. And as they do, you can see that, like, your jaws are still around his neck and they're tugging at him. Oh, I'm going to let him And go. you can see... What? Oh, I know. I'm assuming you're just like gonna try yeah. to claw him yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. And the two of you play this just game of tug of war, where you basically just like the front half of his entire neck just comes off in your jaws, and like his head is hanging on like just but you can see like just the spine and like just like windpipe nothing there as his head just like lolls back off to the side, and you can like tear chunks out of him as he's just, his body is just wrenched backwards into this portal that just shuts. Oh, great. So he's not dead then. Uh. All right, that's my turn then. All right, you can see the other t the other two are still there, looking. Lutz looks horrified. Lady Shasta just looks bored. Um. And. Uh, with that, actually, what Lady Shasta is going to say is, she's just going to actually just completely drop her like aggressive posture and just start flicking like bits of Mont Blanc out from under her fingernails. I was just trying to say, well, if he's gone, then my uh, my reason to be here is as well. So, uh, no hard feelings? I don't know who that is, so. That's the, oh. Uh, Monty doesn't know who that is. That's, well, you felt that she was clawing into yeah. you, so. But she was basically, she's now just basically like, we can be done. Nah. Uh, he's probably, uh, Monty probably can't comprehend of what's going on right now. He's probably just staring okay. at the portal. Alright. Wherever it, yeah. Uh, it, it yeah, vanished. Uh, okay. Um, she's not going to do anything. Dieter's gone. Yule is still uh, drawing cards. Um, Use me yourself. Yule uh, has drawn what I'm interpreting as nothing of value. Okay. So she is like 
staring at this series of sevens and eights and a ten and a two, and she's just like, I'm just gonna stay here and wait, and they'll come back, and when they come back, everything will be fine, and we'll regroup, and we'll figure out what to do about Dieter von Stark. Okay. All right, that'll bring us to Lutz. Lutz is acting to turn, trying to run. Oh, no, Lutz will start his turn the Spirit Guardians. So well, getting attack of opportunity. Go ahead and... Uh, uh, well, let's see what the Spirit Guardians True. do first. He rolled a three. Ooh. 14. Now you may get an attack of opportunity as he turns to run. I'll make one. Tedros, you make it one? Uh, of course I am. Uh, 13 plus 8, so 21. Yep. Just a corner uh, of my eye, just... And he can... He can, uh... Tedros is ringing the bell. Okay. Uh, 12 plus 3, so... 13. All right, don't even bother rolling the... the no, I want, the, I want the, Tedros the, to do the bell, too. Uh, go ahead, roll the damage, yeah, sure. Did he fail the save? It doesn't matter. That'd be another but 16 sure. from the bell. You rolled a 14. Uh, yeah, so you basically what's going to happen here is Monty just, you just reach out. So he's got like all these tentacles like yeah. for hair. You basically reach out, grab those, yank him nearly off his feet. And as you do, the bell hits him. And he's just like, <laughs> and his head just pops. Uh, uh, well, I, I, nothing to let go of. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you still like holding on to the tentacles with just like oh. half a scalp attached to it. And you can just yeah, toss those off the side. Yeah. Uh, that'll bring us to Tedros. Uh, definitely bloodlusted, so I have mm -hmm. to make wisdom saves as, as long as Tedros is near me. Yep. Uh, I got something for that. Um, but Tedros is more concerned with other things. Mm -hmm. Um, he turns to look at Lady Shasa and says, We're not done here. <laughs> oh, all right. What are you doing? Uh, and he pulls off a bunch of feathers mm -hmm. uh, from his holy symbol, and he slams it into his hand this time. Mm -hmm. uh, and he'll cast um, uh, Arcane Abjuration. He'll use his channel divinity for that. Okay. Uh, and it's a DC 14 wisdom saving throw. It should affect Celestials, Elemental, Fae, or Fiends. Okay. And Ooh, what is smart. the effect? All right, so you said it was a wisdom save? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, she got a 19. She succeeds. Okay. She just, yeah, you do that and she just, really? Uh, that'll bring us to Mont Blanc. Uh, oh, um, oh, yeah. As a bonus action, Tetros will you will uh, cast Healing Water in Mont Blanc and say, Okay. Monty? <laughs> Uh, and you get back another. I don't know what numbers are. Six HP. Okay. Still bloodlusted, so a little scared. Mm -hmm. yep. Um. So what? So then it's my turn. Yep. Wisdom save. Nine plus four, thirteen. You're good. Turn from Tedros, and I'm just gonna, I guess, lunge at Lady Shaw. Go ahead. All right. All right. Hybrid predatory strike. Natural twenty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because it does no damage. No, it's all magical. Though. What the fuck? Uh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Wait, is it? Oh, the wait. Is it right, all magical? The Crimson Right's magical. The Crimson Right is magical. Okay, go ahead and roll just the Crimson Right damage as a crit. Oh, that stinks. Uh, Six plus another, so three, because I'm a half orc. into a robot. Mm. Oh, it's weapon dice. Earth to Sam. <laughs> Please come in. Yep. I'm sorry, I didn't know I'm talking. Oh. Hello. Sorry, uh, uh, tit Titan's there. Grave to Sam. Yes. Please come in. Hello. Hello. Am I here again? Yes, yeah. you are. Yes. All right. Well, what was the damage? Uh, it'll be six lightning. 
Okay. Yeah, so it's like your fingers basically just like slide across your skin. It's like when you run your your finger, if you were to run your finger tips across like a rubber sheet, they just like the claws in print like indent but don't like sink in at all and lightning just does kind of dance across your skin she's like wow you go ahead and roll your second no it feels like a waste um uh, okay just gonna look at tedros and go seems immune to most stuff and that's that okay i can't really do anything here so this is I told you, I don't hold any ill will. I don't know, Sam. Uh, that'll bring us to... Oh, that was my blog. That'll, that'll bring us to her. So, uh... Actually, bonus action, turn. I'm gonna revert Am my here form. Again? Bonus action, I'm gonna oh, revert okay. my form, just so I don't attack Tedros. Okay. Uh, she's just gonna look at the two of you on her turn, and just, like, turn and start walking away. My attacks won't do anything to her, so. Mm hmm. She starts her turn in the Spirit Guardians. Nothing. Tedros looks around. He looks mm -hmm. at everything. Uh, and. One of the owls uh, in the radius briefly lands on his shoulder, mm -hmm. uh, and then they all just kind of fade out of view as he lets the spell drop. Okay. And with uh, carnage and mayhem in the middle of the party, and Dieter nowhere to be found except for a pool of blood on the ground, uh, that is where we're going to end the session for the week. Oh boy, just went for it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, fun stuff. I don't know oh. why I expected anything else. I I, to I be feel honest. foolish for not having yeah. expected before. Yeah, honestly, like, it was it's egg on our face. Monty had, Thank you for joining. Monty had a private conversation. It seemed like he was threatening you, so you know, fuck that noise. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, everybody. We ran a little bit longer than I was expecting, but you know, I had to finish that combat encounter. I wasn't going to leave that one hanging. So uh, thank you for joining oh. us. Uh, we'll see y'all next week for the to see where the, where we go from here. Yay! All right, bye everybody. Bye bye. Bye.